All right, so if you're watching this video, you probably just overexposed all of your footage. You thought everything looked great in camera. You brought it into the computer, loaded up everything, and it looked too bright, overexposed, everything blown out. So I'm gonna show you a couple things that you can do in Premiere Pro to try and recover some of this. If your footage isn't too bad, you should be able to save it. So this video is gonna be straight to the point, no BS, let's just get right into it and show you what to do. All right, so I have my clips here in Premiere. I'm gonna go through a couple different options, a um, couple shots that are slightly overexposed, extremely overexposed, and we're just gonna do the best we can to fix these. Again, this isn't gonna be um, a tutorial on how to absolutely fix overexposed footage and make it look amazing, but I'm just gonna show you some steps that you can play around with to do the best you can with the footage and try and salvage it. And what you're gonna wanna do in Premiere to check your exposure is go to your color tab and you should have a Lumetri Scopes uh, tab open up here. If you don't, just go to Windows, uh, Lumetri Scopes here, that'll pull up. This is the shot that we're gonna try and fix. This side of the face is pretty overexposed. Um, so we're gonna try and fix this as much as we can. We're not really, I, I guess I shouldn't say fix, but we're gonna try and neutralize the footage as best we can and just kind of even it out and make it look as best we can. If we were to go to our basic correction tab and we were gonna pull down the highlights, like there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of play that we have in this tab. I don't really like to use this until I'm doing my final adjustments. So to start out here, obviously our reds are bumped uh, pretty hot. Uh, this is kind of, this is just normal because we're shooting without a picture profile. So they're gonna be pretty vibrant compared to shooting on a flat profile. So what I wanna do to salvage the skin tones as best we can, cause it's gonna start getting really bad once we, once we do some adjustments. I'm gonna start by pulling that saturation down. You can see in the scopes, if I bring it up here, all those reds are just pushing over 100. I'm gonna try and neutralize that a little bit. We're gonna pull some of that saturation out and that's gonna come back the second we start doing some adjustments. So we'll probably even pull it down further. So once we do that, go to your effects tab. We're gonna to go to Luma Curve. We're gonna throw that on. And what we wanna do is try and bring some of this back down. So I wanna put it down to like 80. Let's see how that looks. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the top right corner. We're gonna pull some of that down to 80, there we go. And you can see up here, we started getting a little bit of that detail back. You can't, there's not a big difference, but you can kind of tell. Then we're gonna grab the bottom here and we're gonna squeeze this lower part of the waveform. Squeeze that up to about 20. And what we're doing is we're flattening out this image. We're almost essentially creating like a flat profile in post and you're not gonna have as much information to play with, obviously, as if you were shooting in a flat profile, but we're gonna try and recreate it as best we can and uh, just kind of fix it from there. So let's pull that up to about 80. Now we have this flat profile here. So you can tell already we have our before here, which doesn't look awful, it's still usable, but it is a little overexposed in the skin tones. Now we're kind of flattening out the image, we're stripping it, and then we're gonna try and get the best skin tone possible out of this blown out highlight. So after we have the Luma curve in there, let's go to brightness and contrast, throw that on. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some of that contrast back. And you're gonna, you're gonna notice the second I do that, this waveform is gonna stretch back out. And we're gonna start overexposing again, especially in the reds. So. Here we are back at zero. We're just gonna put some of that contrast and detail back in. Let's not go overboard yet. Pull that. Let's go back to our Lumetri tab over here. Let's pull out some of the saturation again. And what we're essentially doing is just battling the waveform. We're trying to mix and match and play around with the image to make it look as best as possible. And every little tweak that we do, since there is a little overexposure in the footage, little changes that we do are just going to throw off certain parts of the image. So we really just have to mix and match until we get something that we're happy with. Bring, bring that down again. And now we can even go back to our Luma waveform Bring it back down and you can see we're getting a little more detail. It's kind of starting to come together. There we go. Here's our before. 
Here's our after. Again, not perfect, but it does look better, I think. So again, there's our before. Here's our after. Now what I'm gonna try is, sometimes this works great, is if we duplicate the footage, and then on this top layer, we're gonna delete the effects that we had. And we're gonna change the blend mode to darken. So you'll notice when I go to darken, let's go back to normal, darken, it just kind of evens out the skin tones a little more. So let's zoom in on my face with awkward facial hair. Here's, here's the skin tones right here, right? So here's normal before we did that. Bright, kind of yellowish, uh, but you can still see there's detail there. We didn't completely blow out the image. But once we go, oops, once we go to darken, you'll see it cleaned it up a lot more, kind of evened it out overall. So I think that looks pretty good. So we have our before, we have our after. I think it looks pretty good. I think it's a lot more even. I think the skin tones are, they look a lot nicer. They're not as blown out. So obviously this is a mild case of an overexposed shot. Um, so it is a lot easier to salvage this. Now let's go into a more extreme case. Let's go to this. This guy is not looking good. We're a lot more blown out there. We're losing a lot of detail there. Um, you can see in the histogram too, compared to this, we're down in the 80s. Let's move over here and now we're pushing 100 right there. So that's that's blown out, that's overexposed, it's not good. So we're not gonna have as good of a result by doing this, but let's do that same process. And um, and again, this I mean, your footage may, might be like this, your footage might be like this. This is completely blown out, we probably can't save that, but just use this process that I'm teaching you and see what you can do, just keep playing around with it. And you might be able to get it into a point where you can at least use it and it's not totally ruined. Um, it's not gonna look great, but let's try this real quick. We have this shot, again, a lot more overexposed than this one. And we're gonna go to the same process. We're gonna go to Luma Curve, throw that on, drop it down. And you can see as I do this before, I pull out the saturation. Look at how gross the skin tones start looking. It's almost like I'm adding saturation by doing it. It looks really bad. Pull that in, you can see all that red in there. So did that, let's pull that out and try and get some of that red down there, okay. And then um, I like to keep the Lumetri color on top of the Luma Curve. One thing to keep in mind, especially if you're copying and pasting these settings, make sure that they are in the correct order. You wanna do uh, Lumetri color on top, Luma Curve, brightness and color, and then whatever secondary Luma coloring that you do in the end. Make sure they're in that order because they will react differently if your brightness is on top versus below the luma curve and you can play around with that and you'll see the difference it just doesn't work right so make sure that you do that when you're copying and pasting onto different clips all right so we have this uh, now let's bring in our contrast brightness and contrast boom start playing around with it Pull out a little more of that saturation. Try and keep this like in the 80 range over here. See what it does. And this is all just playing around and experimenting. I have no idea how this is actually gonna look at the end, but I'm just playing around and trying to do the best I can um, with it. And by using these tools on the side, these effects versus just playing around in the Lumetri color tab, you're gonna have a lot more control over the image. Got that, let's see. Bring that down, pop a little more. Contrast in there. Pull this out. A little more. Okay, that, I mean, it's still, it's still, over, it's still hot. You know, it's, you can't make it perfect, but it still looks hot. Let's try changing the opacity of the top layer. So let's change this back to darken, neutralizes it again. And that's just kind of a quick fix on that. Let's go to our before and our after. That looks a lot better. Um, it's still 
blown out. You can't do too much with that. Let's go back to my weird face here. Go to our before, you can see all of that is blown out up there. It's really hot. Um, but there still is information. It's not completely lost because we're barely peaking over 100. Throw that back on. Looks a lot nicer. And then from there, um, you can play around with the colors a little more, throw your LUTs on, do whatever you do, but just be mindful that um, little adjustments to your color is going to affect this image a lot more than if your, your video was properly exposed. This one, I don't think you could save it, but again, let's try, let's try the process. It's just for fun. So let's go to our, actually, let's start by pulling out that saturation. Or a Luma curve. Yeah, this is tough. It's pretty much just white. And you can tell if you bring this all the way down, you can see all of this blown out. So that's a lot of, that's detail that I don't think we're gonna get back. But let's try it anyways. Flatten out this image. Plot saturation out a lot. Go to our contrast. We might even try bring this brightness down for this. And you could tell how overexposed it is because when I pull the saturation out, I'm losing saturation like in little portions of the shirt, which just is not good. Yeah, I don't want to move it around. Its image is just kind of starting to fall apart. And just for fun, let's throw this on. Darken. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think this one is salvageable. But just for the heck of it, here's our before, here's our after. It looks bad, uh, it doesn't look good. I don't think you can really use something like this, unfortunately, but for the most part, I don't think you're gonna be overexposing your image more than this, you shouldn't be. If you're overexposing more than this, you should be able to see it in camera and catch it right away. Also, obviously be using your histogram in camera, zebra, set up your zebras to like 90, and that's gonna show what portions of the image are bumping over 90 or wherever you don't wanna pass. That's all I have for this. I hope that uh, this technique will help you and just play around with it. No matter how overexposed your image is, just play around with it. Just see what you can do by using this technique. It should help at least a little bit. Hopefully your footage is just slightly overexposed and you can salvage it by doing this. Just gonna even out the image and make it look usable. If you liked this video and if it helped at all, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I plan to make a lot more videos like this. If there's any video in particular you want me to make next, let me know in the comments and uh, I will jot it down and start planning for it. So uh, that's pretty much all I have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.